in this episode, we are joined yet again by Coach Ramon Espada, who's the boxing trainer of Alex Wasabi, and coached Alex all the way to coming out victorious against Deji on March 5th, which was the main event of Showstar Boxing. It's a pleasure to be joined by you yet again, and welcome back. Thanks for having me. With Alex coming off his debut in boxing and really finally making that walk into the ring, after all the time he spent training with you for the past couple of years, how did that feel for you to finally have him in there? And what did you think of his performance? I, I thought it was great. He delivered on, on what we needed, and that was the win, right? So, um, but uh, we, we can't rest on that. Um, yeah. I know they're calling him out. So he has to keep growing, keep training. Uh, but for, listen, for his first fight, under the circumstances, the pressure, the huge crowd headlining yeah. at Wembley, that's that was major, right? Like, I, yeah, it was huge. Situation like that, or even seeing a situation like that, is is the stuff of Rocky movies. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, he he delivered, man. He, he he performed well, and just like I thought he would. So it, it was it was awesome. And as this was Alex's first ever boxing match and him not having pr uh, prior to this experience inside the ring under the bright lights, what was some of the advice, uh, if you could say, that you really wanted to drill into Alex coming into this fight? Just to do what we always do in the gym, you know, like, um, you know, as I said before in the interview with you guys, we put his feet to the fire and, and, and there were no easy days in the gym. And um, uh, I knew that um, making it tough for him would make the fight easy and so um he needed to know that you know like that he could walk through the fire and and, and do what he does right so um i think uh and I, I told him the fight would be be way easier than than uh training was so and he actually heard that from a couple other coaches that he respects and and so uh um, he you know that that came to fruition so he realized it in the ring and delivered and you know, there's little things here and there that he could have did better. But overall, I mean, he kept control the whole fight and um, he fought on his, his terms and and pretty much won out uh, all the exchanges, in my opinion. Yeah, especially yeah. for his first fight, he looked very calm and composed in there the entire time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's, that's great. And, and when you mentioned that you were looking for him to believe that himself, his confidence was, was really good. And with him being the underdog in Deji's hometown and had really – a lot of pressure on him and it seems like Alex was was really in the zone he was like having fun and you know messing around what what do you think was the key in getting his confidence and like self-belief like to that point just daily reminders man I mean you know the the thing about it is um this goes for anybody everybody has doubts you know and um sometimes we feed those doubts and those doubts grow right so yeah uh, in this situation uh being with him every day for the week leading up to the fight and um, having my other guy uh, around too, my other guy Vlad Pannon, who's who's 13 fights into his pro career, just to kind of give him the state of mind of what he should be thinking, how he should be thinking, and just knowing that all the all the hard work's been done, you know, and and he should walk in that confidence, knowing that all the hard work's been done, and and now all that's left to do is get in the ring and deliver. So, um, yeah, it was just a constant uh daily reminder you know um and and i think uh as time progressed uh, he definitely his confidence grew you know so and then seeing deji up close and doing the face-offs and um you know seeing the hostility of the crowd because that, that was a very hostile crowd yeah for sure you know and and knowing like all of this doesn't matter all that matters is what happens in the ring on the night of the fight and none of these people, well, we thought none of these people would be able to get in the ring, but <laughs> they surprised with that one. Uh, I didn't expect yeah. That. yeah. That was crazy. Someone just randomly just popped in there. So yeah, that was very crazy. I've not seen anything like that in real life. Uh, <laughs> but um, actually, I take that back. I did see that at the Golden Gloves a few years back here in L.A., but uh yeah, not not on that stage, uh, not with the cameras rolling and everything, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, like we were talking about, some guy just running into the ring, and with this event build up being very different than your typical kind of fight due to the YouTube aspect of it, how would you kind of compare the experience of this fight as a whole compared to the build up of some of the other pro fights? Uh, you know, man, it, it, it's right on par. I was um, I. 
I, I've been on some some big cards and um, you know walked with some guys that um, fought on the highest levels um, on you know in, in championship boxing. Uh, Paul Williams, uh, I did the ring walk with him um, when he fought Winky Wright, and uh, that was huge back then. Uh, my guy Gerald Washington, uh, he was the um, co-main event with uh, Wilder Fury in the second fight, and um, you know I was a part of that, and that that was. Just, that doesn't get any bigger than that. it doesn't get any bigger than that one. Mm-hmm. That one was, and, and I felt it, but this was, this was right on par. I mean, like I've uh, also worked with um, a kickboxer, uh, Raymond Daniels, who um, fought in glory and Bellator and their production is, is unmatched in boxing or, or any uh, martial arts, in my opinion, like, um the, their production just the lighting the ring everything it's very professional uh these guys uh show star they're they're right on par with all of that man and i mean they, they did a great job um setting everything up the venue was great um you know there were little things here and there they could have done better but overall i, I thought it was very professional and and um I, you know i felt at home with it yeah, that's good to hear. And with only a couple of months of preparation coming into this fight, at least dedicated to this fight for Alex, and yeah. he he showed he showed a lot of heart, skill, and improvements than what most people really expected for to see him. And uh, would you be able to give us a little bit more of like an insight as to what the training camp really had in store for him? He was sparring guys, um, you know, a couple of my pros, um, and then um, guys who just have way, way, way more boxing experience than he does. Um, you know, a uh, couple, a uh, couple amateur kids. Uh, this kid Damien, who's probably gave him the best work. Super aggressive southpaw, who um, was not easy to hit. Um, he, he he had like ten fights on him, but like he's L.A. man is a mixed bag. But there's a lot of high level boxers here, uh, and the amateurs and the professionals, right? So, um, you know, the, the thing is, is uh, the pros. They're going to hold back because they know he's new. The amateurs, not so much. They're going to kick your butt. And, and so he got a lot of that. He, he, you know, he he got his butt kicked. Uh, and I know there was times where he was doubting himself and like, man, this is this is hard. And, you know, we had conversations about it, um, you know. But the thing was, he kept showing up. He kept putting in the work. He kept making the adjustments. And he kept having, you know, six, little success uh, here and there, like, you know, He'd, he'd land punches that he never landed before, you know, he'd be put in a pressure situation where, you know, he responded in the appropriate manner. And uh, I think, you know, little by little, those pieces of the puzzle started coming together. And, and I think he realized, um, you know, he, he started to get it, you know, like it's, it's not, you're not going to put it all together at once, especially not with this short period of time, but you're getting elements of it. And, and again, he showed up every day and was, I mean, I, whatever I asked him to do, he did, he did, you know, and that was the cool part. And, um, and he believed in himself. So obviously he walked through the fire and he, he delivered. So it was, it was awesome. Yeah, that's great. And during the fight, it was clear that uh, Alex had quite a lot of reach and height on Deji that he was using very well uh, as the fight was taking place. And it seemed like Deji was struggling to find his distance and had difficulty finding some shots to land clean on Alex. Were you guys focusing on utilizing the height and reach advantage as a part of your game plan at all? Yeah, that was, uh, here's the deal. Like, it doesn't matter if the guy's taller than you or shorter than you. Um, And in both circumstances, the guy who understands how to control the distance better is going to win out. So it's not always the guy with the longer reach that is going to win out in that situation. So, you know, we earlier in the camp we were sparring temper temper is a way longer bigger guy than alex uh he's six he's like six three six four yeah and uh you know and in my opinion it was it was good sparring because you know um it was a southpaw look but it was a different look and so alex you know he, he wanted to work with him but it was the thing like he's way taller than deji and yeah yeah that's fine but if you can make the adjustment and control the distance with this guy, it's going to be way easier to control the distance with somebody shorter than you. So 
um you know so we gave him different looks he had guys shorter than him guys taller than him uh you know i showed him everything we like like i said we left no stone unturned um i i knew deji was shorter than him i didn't think he was that much shorter but um it, it really showed when they got next to each other uh you know i had alex sitting on the back foot um and and just that's proper boxing man like you know when when you have an advantage like that uh in height and reach you got to know what to do with it if he's sitting on the front foot makes the fight easier for deji deji gets to him way easier and uh but if he's you know sitting a little bit more upright then deji's got to close the gap and get to him and and that's you know that's boxing 101 so and alex alex wasn't just uh taller than deji he was also He's bigger weight wise and he had a bigger frame than Deji, which it looked that way in the ring. Uh, Alex actually gained weight for this fight. He was smaller. Yeah. He's, well, so the, the funny part was that he was concerned about the weight uh, beginning, you know, because um, uh, back when we were training in the summer, he was like 150 something, 160 something. Like he was really light. Yeah. Wow. And, and so we knew Deji was heavier and you know we didn't know that fight was going to happen back then and so i you know he was he was tripping that he was so skinny like he's like oh man like you know uh, look at how <laughs> lean i am and and that's part of boxing like when you're boxing on a daily basis uh you're gonna slim down it's there's no way around it and so he slimmed down and um but for this fight he had to gain weight and the yeah. funny part that deji came in lower and we yeah, deji lost the weight yeah, he did. He looked great too, you know. Um, and uh, you know, I think they're built different. Deji's uh carries most of his weight in his lower body, and and Alex is a bigger frame and he's kind of uh leaner and taller, right? So yeah, they're they're built different. Um, I think Deji um did a good job with his new style. Um, he just um, you know, he's he's gotta he's gotta make it his own. He's gotta stick with it for a while and he can uh, learn to operate out of that stance and getting low and all that. Cause he, d he definitely had opportunities to counter Alex, uh, you know, but again, we anticipated a lot of these things. Like if he gets under him or he tries to get low, like what to do and all that stuff. So we, we left no stone unturned as far as that goes. Yeah. And Alex seemed to be comfortable and was even overpowering Deji and especially like the clinch. He was he was really doing good work in, in that. Was that something that you were also like honing in and preparing for in the camp? Like any situation? Any situation. Man. It, 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 depending on the day of the week, it's whatever I think we need to do in that moment. And um, you know, clenching is a part of boxing. And and some guys, when when it, you know, there there's situations where guys are trying to hold you, or there's situations where you're going to need to hold uh, your opponent. So. Uh, and in both cases, he's got to be, he's got to have that understanding. So yeah, that was something we worked on. And as the mental side of things really play a big role in every boxing match and the entire lead up of uh, this fight with Deji being backed by the home crowd and everything being a part of the fight. What do you think of how uh, Alex also reacted to being pretty much coming to the UK and having to be the underdog? You know, I've, I've, work the corners of guys who have go, gone to fight in Europe and in England in particular. Uh, so I was aware of how passionate their fans are. And um, I kind of gave them a heads up of what to expect. Uh, but to be honest with you, that was like what to expect times a hundred. Cause I had, <laughs> guys had so much disdain for Alex. Uh, it was, it was kind of funny. He, he's, he's a nice guy. He's a genuine, nice guy. And to see the anger and hostility that they had for him was like, whoa, are these people for real? Like, this is a joke, right? Like, but it, it was constant. Um, but he dealt with it. You know, he, we laughed about it. Uh, we had people throwing stuff at us. Um, just, it, it, it was crazy. Like, I, we seriously were like, we're going to have to fight our way through, you know, leaving the venue and stuff like that. We, we thought we were going to have to actually fist fight some of these guys. Uh, there's video footage of it out there. Uh, you can see people getting hit with eggs and stuff. It was wild. Mm -hmm. I've never seen it before, uh, at least not in person. But it was reminiscent of a uh, fight that Hagler had at Wembley. This is probably before you guys were born. Uh, Hagler had a fight at Wembley where he stopped a guy in three rounds, and they just started throwing stuff into the ring. 
And uh, I just remember that as a kid, seeing that on live TV, like, whoa, these people are crazy. And it's always stuck in my head. And um, But yeah, they're passionate fans over there, man, probably more so than here. So Yeah, and Alex, he, he showed a lot of uh, boxing skill with nice long jab, great pacing as well, with his cardio really uh, up to par and lasting him throughout the fight, really do, doing a lot. And what were like the main things you guys worked on in camp to get him ready for whatever Deji was to bring into the fight? I just kept putting different looks in front of him. Uh, you know, um, once he started to adjust or uh, have an easier time, then time to switch it up and bring a new person in and, and give him a new puzzle to solve. So it's one of those things where, uh, you know, I didn't allow him to get comfortable and being able to control situations. I wanted to put him in very uncomfortable situations uh, purposely so that he would adjust and, and have that mindset of adjusting and, and just being prepared for whatever might come at him. And with the fight, unfortunately, having some controversy in the end with a split decision that pretty much most people would agree that was definitely not close enough to warrant one judge scoring it uh, for Deji and having it be a split decision. But of course, with some emotions being high and it being in Deji's hometown, which can, that, that could sometimes happen. What are your thoughts on the call? And what was going through your mind when they announced the split decision? How did you have it kind of scored? Uh, well, you know we hear that term thrown around a lot hometown decision and it's kind of an unfortunate one in boxing in my opinion it ruins uh it ruins it for everybody especially the boxers and the fans um you know um I don't know what was on that judge's mind that scored it for Deji or what he was watching uh I know those guys were professionals though and in my mind uh that sort of thing needs to be reviewed um, they need to take a good look at their guy and, you know, maybe he's he's an older guy or something, or maybe he's somebody that's used to watching MMA. I don't know, but um, it's not the first time that something like that has happened. Uh, it, it happens in boxing a lot, unfortunately, so they, they got to take a look at that. I will say, though, um, there was one thing that may have contributed to the confusion or mishap and I'll call it a mishap because I don't want to believe people were doing stuff like this on purpose um we were in the I believe we were in the red corner we were in the blue corner but they gave us red gloves and Deji was in the red corner with black gloves and sometimes uh you know simple mistakes are made oh he's the guy with the red gloves is the red corner no the guy with the black gloves is the red corner so you know, I could see somebody making a mistake like that. And if you look at the scorecards, they usually, they'll have the names, but they also have like red corner, blue corner. So I, I don't know. I, I I guess I'm making excuses for the guy, but I, I don't want to believe it was done intentionally or that there's corruption. So it's, it's either that or incompetency. So, but, you know, that's for them to decide, but I think the right guy won and, I, and that's good for us. Yeah, even even with that co-main event with Face Temper and King Kenny, there's a lot of controversy. Did you get the chance to watch that fight? Yeah, yeah, we did. Um, and yeah, I thought that was a clear win. Yeah, for for um, uh, Temper and you know that that yeah that was unfortunate, and that just made us more determined to really have Alex put his stamp on it to make sure that that sort of thing didn't happen. So. You know, we had a conversation right before we went to the ring. Like, hey, man, we just saw what happened with this guy. That should have been a clear win. So let's make sure we don't make or leave this to question. You know, it had to be he had to deliver. So and I thought he did. Yeah. And what would you think of Deji and his performance and with him being 0-3 now in this kind of exhibition boxing matches? Where do you see him going? And you think he should maybe stop boxing as he's really struggled to find a win thus far? You know what, man? Um I don't think you should quit. Number one, um, th this is not an easy sport, and 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 the level that he's choosing to box on, uh, or or the stage, I should say, is huge. You know, for a guy who's um, not really had any background in boxing, and he's somebody that just you know has a love for the sport and trained and fought, and even though he's fighting other YouTubers and all that, it, it's you know you, you got to take your lumps, man. You, you, to me, he shouldn't quit. I, I saw some very good things from him that we didn't expect. The head movement being uh, key. Like, he got underneath a lot of right hands from Alex. 
and um you know he was really good at evading punches um which is something that's new to his arsenal um you know but then i know too like switching coaches like that um you kind of get stuck between styles sometimes i think you know if he if he sticks to one road and and just keeps learning he can win like he's he's got it in him to win i know there's a lot of guys kind of uh giving him crap about it uh but i think he should stick with it i think he's he's got a future if he if he just keeps growing and keeps learning and it's it can't be a a sometime thing man it's got to be a way of life you got to do this stuff every day there's no way around it and if you think that you're going to get away with just training a few weeks before a fight pick another sport yeah and with you uh mentioning how kind of switching coaches can lead to a crossroads between styles how do you think uh what do you think about deji and him switching up his camp only uh six weeks prior and you and alex pretty much having a close bond for several years now and training together do you think that might have played at all to his performance uh during the fight um you know uh... Uh, all I can go off of is what I see and what I hear. And what I heard him say was that, you know, he, he needed to be challenged more and he felt like, um, his coach, uh, his current coach was, is giving him that. I don't know what was happening in his previous camps or any of that, but, um, um, I don't think he's, he's all that, he's that bad. I think he needs to be, um, a little smarter about picking his opposition and making sure that um, he just takes the training serious, man. I mean, again, like sw switching camps. I if if I knew the guy, I probably would have advised against it. Like, no, nah, man, you, you stick to who you get, have right now and keep it going. But um, I mean, you know, again, I saw new wrinkles in what he's doing with the head movement and all that. He he looked better, so it, it's hard to say. But as as far as like uh, Alex and I gelling, like it's not been a constant two years that we work together. Uh, what's happened is, you know, he started with one of my other guys and then, and then I started training him. I took over training him and I trained him for a short while when he was thinking he was going to have a fight and then the fight fell through. And so I backed off of training him and he started working with one of my other guys. So the thing about it is like, he's worked with about three or four coaches, but they've all been guys that either box for me, they all box for me before. So they all understand uh, my philosophy of boxing. And so they made sure that the training that they're giving him, it might be slightly different, but it's all still within the same school, same school of thought, same philosophy of boxing. And so there's no deviation there. So when I jump back in to train him, uh, you know, he's, he's still on the same page. And, and that to me is very important. Like you got to understand um, boxing philosophies and sometimes switching trainers like that. You got guys with different philosophies or they may have the same philosophy, but sometimes just the way they do things is, is very different. And that there's a, there's a, a an adjustment period there that isn't always a, a smooth one. Yeah, with with Deji, he he actually came in much much fitter, lost the weight, and uh, he showcased better cardio than previous, as well as introducing head movement, like you mentioned, and evasiveness, pretty much being able to slip a lot of shots. Is there anything else from Deji that really surprised you? You, you maybe didn't expect from him coming into this fight. Um, you know, I I, I watched a little bit of his uh, training footage and stuff like that. And he he looked like he was throwing really good punches, and he had good speed on his punches. And, um, you know, um, his hooks and stuff, he was throwing to the body. I, I saw a lot of things that I thought, whoa, this, this guy, he, he's put the work in, he's, he's improved. So, again, like, that just made us work harder to make sure that if he is bringing these things to the table, we, we need to shut him down, we need to take him away, and we need to make sure that we're in control. So um, yeah, I, I did see things that I thought uh, were much improved, and um, you know, uh, there's a lot of variables going into this and, you know, sometimes guys have bad days. Uh, sometimes they're overconfident. Sometimes they're not confident. You know, you, you never know. It's kind of a roll of a dice, but uh, so long as you have consistency in your training, uh, you can kind of um, eliminate some of those, um, 
obstacles that might be in the way. So that's, you know, I don't know what his personal situation is, but I know what we had control over is what we focused on. And so I made sure that Alex had the same mindset every day and reminded him, you know, everything we did was tailored towards Deji. So, um, and, and even though I was putting different guys in the ring with him, uh, it was still with the mindset of this is, this might happen or this, he might bring this to the table and, and so on and so forth. Yeah. And Al said immediately after the fight that he might want to have a rematch with Deji. And what what do you kind of think on uh, what would be the difference between the first fight and second fight if it were to go through? And what would be some like adjustments early on do you think you could, might be able to make for Alex? Uh, I think if they have a rematch, Alex stops him. Um, you know, because I know that nerves were involved. And um, Alex was pretty much operating on muscle memory. And, uh, you know, there were times he came back to the corner. It was funny. We had a conversation after. You know, he'd come back to the corner. I'd give him some instruction. He's nodding, yes, yes, yes. He goes back out there, and he's pretty much going back into what he knows or what we've trained to do. And so um, there were things like minor adjustments that he could have made to end that fight. And, um, you know, I think just uh, the magnitude of the situation and everything else, like, didn't allow that to happen. I think now going in again, he's going to be way calmer, and way more in control and will definitely hear that adjustment and in my opinion a rematch he stops Deji yeah and uh Alex has also called out someone else KSI who's Deji's older brother actually just made a video on him and he's probably the biggest YouTube star in the UK but he hasn't fought since his win against Logan Paul in 2019 what are your thoughts on that potential fight oh that'd be a great fight um I, I actually saw him in the ring him and Alex are about the same height. Um, he may have an inch on Alex. Uh, that that would be an interesting fight. That might be a, a better fight, in my opinion, uh, than him and uh, Deji rematch. So, yeah, who knows? I mean, let's see what happens. And after such a long build up with all the press leading up to a big fight, fighters usually take breaks in between uh, fights. But it seems like Alex is already looking to get back in there. Uh, with him saying he wants to, to fight a couple more times this year. Obviously, he's on a high right now on a, off a big win, but do you see Alex probably getting back into training soon and going back in there motivated for another fight? Yeah, again, this is a way of life, man. Like, it's there are no, there are no breaks. Uh, to rest is to rust, right? So, I mean, there's different kinds of rest. Rest to let your body recuperate, uh, but as far as, like, uh, sharpening and... Uh, growing skill wise and all that um, you know he's he's definitely at a new plateau and the idea is to take him to a higher one so there are no breaks we'll, we'll get back to it mm -hmm. yeah and with Alex kind of being a rising star in the entire YouTube boxing scene and him getting his first win on this big stage as well as showcasing that he is taking this really seriously and putting in the work and the hours in the gym with you and I know you might not be as involved in the whole YouTube thing, but are there any other opponents or names you've heard of that could be a possible opponent for Alex? Uh, you know what, man? All of this stuff is new to me. Um, I didn't know who Deji was before he mentioned this guy. So, <laughs> And uh, I, I learned who KSI was uh, right about the time that I met Alex. So um, I know who KSI is. Uh, I know who the uh, Pauls are. Uh, actually, one of my professionals sparred uh, Logan to get him ready for... Uh, for the Mayweather fight. And um, so I, I've, I've seen those guys and I know who they are, uh, but the rest of them, there's a bunch of guys that are coming out of the woodworks calling Alex out. I, I don't know any of these guys. I don't watch YouTube. So like, the only thing I watch on YouTube is, is professional fights, actual fights. So, Yeah. And kind of talking about uh, professional fights uh, with this exp exhibition fight between Alex and Deji being a really big event, and with Alex showcasing his dedication to the sport, do you see Alex maybe potentially in the future turning pro and maybe in this next fight or potentially down the road as he continues to develop in boxing? Well, you know, um, the thing that I like about the YouTube boxers is that um, uh, they're, they're modest guys and they understand and have a serious respect for the sport. Um, you know, something like that, that's, 
further down the line, it's a possibility if he wants it. He's he's definitely got the dedication and he's got some ability. So um, if if that's what he wants, I'm, I'm sure he could make that happen and uh, we could make that happen. Um, but, you know, at this point, I know he's just trying to fight other YouTubers and um, we'll let the work, the, le- the rest of it work itself out. It's just one fight at a time. Yep. So thank you. Thank you very much for coming on. Appreciate you coming back and discussing after the big win. Thanks for having me.